Hey, you. So, apparently, a few of my students have found my YouTube channel despite my protestations. My guess would be that since y'all aren't big readers, you're just here to make fun of me, but that's okay. I hope you get some entertainment out of this. Anyway, since my last bookish video, I have read 23 books, and over my next several videos, I would like to discuss them. So, here we go. The first book I read in the summer of 2024 was Leviathan Wakes. This book is by James S.A. Corey, which is the collective pseudonym of a writing duo that consists of Daniel Abraham and Ty Frank. This is the first novel in the critically acclaimed Expanse series, and it was intended to be a buddy read with some church friends, but pretty much everyone else ended up dropping out due to the book not being to their liking. But I loved it. Now, I do have a background in space studies, so I am very familiar with the layout of our solar system, and this may have helped me to follow along with the sprawling action. As one of my friends who dropped out of the Buddy Reads stated, they were just sort of getting lost in terms of the scale of the locations. Uh, I have also watched the TV series based on the books, so I do wonder if that familiarity allowed me to enjoy it a bit more since a lot of the imaginative heavy lifting had already been done for me by the show's production department. Uh, regardless, I loved the show, and I was excited to go back to where it all started. So Leviathan Wakes is set in a somewhat nearish future where humanity has colonized most of the inner solar system. So Mars, the moon, the asteroid belt, as well as a bit of the outer solar system, including one of Jupiter's moons, Ganymede. The narrative sort of oscillates back and forth between two main characters, Jim Holden, the highly conscientious XO of an ice hauler ship known as the Canterbury, and Detective Miller, a washed-up, morally gray cop on Ceres Station, which is located on the dwarf planet in the asteroid belt. The story kicks off when the Canterbury responds to a distress signal from an apparently derelict ship. Holden and his crew investigate and they discover the distress signal is fake. It's about that time that a mysterious stealth warship arrives and destroys the Canterbury, killing everyone on it. This sparks tensions between Earth, Mars, and the Belt, and threatens to ignite an interplanetary war. Holden and his crew escape in a Martian frigate they rename the Rocinante, and they embark on a quest to uncover the truth behind the stealth warship, which leads to the unraveling of a conspiracy involving an infectious agent of extraterrestrial origin. Meanwhile, Miller is assigned to find the missing daughter of a wealthy mercantile magnate, and his investigation pulls him into the same conspiracy as Holden and company. As the story progresses, Holden and Miller's paths converge, revealing the true scale of the conspiracy. They discover that this infectious agent, known as the proto-molecule, has the potential to transform and even possibly destroy all life in the solar system. It all builds to an exciting climax as Holden and Miller race against the clock to stop those who seek to use the proto-molecule for their own nefarious ends. This book isn't perfect by any means, but as far as I'm concerned, its strengths far outweigh its flaws. I fell in love with Jim Holden and the crew of the Rocinante as they made their way from one perilous situation to another throughout the solar system. I could have done 
without a lot of the italicized internal monologuing. This is just an authorial choice that always feels very amateurish to me. And with the first and third acts being extremely exciting, the middle did seem to sag just a tad as the end game pieces got moved into place. But I do think the climax was terrific and the resolution was quite satisfying, especially considering there are eight more books in the series. Thematically, the book revolves around humanity's never ending struggle with power and unity. It puts on display how our fears and our ambitions lead to conflict despite considerable technological advancements and expansion beyond our home planet. In the future, we remain deeply divided along political lines, along cultural lines, along social lines, just like we are now. But it's not all doom and gloom because it also celebrates the resilience of the human spirit and our capacity to cooperate especially when faced with existential threats. I mean, this is a truth that Ozymandias revealed at the end of Watchmen, right? That sometimes all we need to come together as a species is a huge, larger-than-life, world-ending threat. All in all, I gave Leviathan Wakes a five-star review, and I'm very excited to read the next one, which is called Caliban's War. So in my 2024 tier ranking, which you may notice I have changed from S-A-B-C-D to loved it, liked it, it was okay, didn't care for it, and couldn't finish it. I believe I'm going to place Leviathan Wakes firmly between This Is How You Lose the Time War and Piranesi. I think Time War is a special book. Piranesi is too. So this just goes to show how highly I regard this first entry in the Expanse series. If you've read Leviathan Wakes, I would love to know your thoughts. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.